Hello there. In this video I'm going to show you how I built these walls and fences. They are particularly good at blocking lines of sights and, well, I need terrain that can do that. I wanted to keep the terrain very simple this time, but ended up going about it in three different complicated ways. Different complicated here does not necessarily mean only in terms of difficulty, but also regarding the material you'll be needing. Things you'll definitely need are a pencil, a ruler, cutting tools, that means knives and scissors, and you'll also need tools for painting, so brushes and paints. For the concrete wall, all you really need is thick cardboard from a shipping box, thin cardboard from a cereal box, wood glue and sand. Even if you never made terrain before, these are materials you should have at home. I wanted to build the concrete walls primarily because I needed terrain for Zona Alpha, which, as you know, is set in Eastern Europe. I wanted my wall to have the rectangular pattern that is often typical for Eastern Europe, so I first tested how many 1x1cm cardboard tiles would make the right wall height and then cut out correspondingly large pieces of cardboard as the basic wall. By the way, you can see the exact measurements here. These thin cardboard stripes will later hide the inside of the thick cardboard pieces. Now all you have to do is glue the whole shebang together and all that's missing is the base. The base is not really meant to be seen as a base, but to look like piles of rubble or tufts of grass that have formed at some point next to the wall. Accordingly, it is relatively narrow with bulges in the middle. Now the base just needs some ground texture. So just brush on wood glue and then dump sand over it and that's it for crafting. Of course, destroyed wall pieces are an option. To do this, simply cut the wall in half and hide the wall interior with a wood glue sand paste. First, I prime the wall with grey gesso. Then, I apply dark grey acrylic paint with a sponge. This is followed by brown acrylic paint for the base. The third step is to apply black wash. By the way, I had a nice happy accident here. Gesso and acrylic paint are affected differently by the wash, which now gives the wall an extra weathered look. Now hit everything with a light grey dry brush and the wall is ready. For the corrugated metal fence, you need mainly the same as for the concrete wall. Cardboard, wood glue and sand. In addition, you also need kebab skewers and some kind of corrugated cardboard. The corrugated metal fence should look improvised, chaotic, junky, as if assembled by orcs or a junkyard owner. First, I cut off pieces of corrugated cardboard in different sizes, but still in scale with 28mm figures. Then I cut the kebab skewers into 6cm fence posts. Then I cut out bases similar to the concrete walls. Then I glued the fence post on top of it and I glued sand on the bottom. Now it's time for the actual fence elements. To make all the fence elements similar in size, I cut out a template and put different pieces of cardboard together on it until I liked everything. Then I glued them together to form a fence element. Here you can get really creative. Combine corrugated cardboard with regular cardboard, mix large and small pieces and leave a gap here and there. Sky is the limit. Last but not least, I glued the fence elements to the fence post and glued in diagonal fence posts to make everything a bit more detailed and stable. First, I painted the base with brown acrylic paint. This is followed by brown and beige acrylic paint to make the fence elements look rusty. Now I'm dabbing on the remains of the original paint job, a bright turquoise that contrasts nicely with a rusty brown. The next step is to coat everything with wash. Now turquoise is dabbed on again to show color in different weathering levels. After that I'm painting on some gunmetal to really make it all look like old cheat metal. 
Finally, the base is dry brushed with a light grey acrylic paint and with that the corrugated metal fences are finished. For the chain link fence I mostly use materials that I only have at home because I've been building terrain for a long time. You need foam board, filler and miniature barbed wire. Also super glue, wood glue and sand shouldn't be missing. You also need some leftover spruce and some kind of netting. I use the potato net simply because it looks exactly like real chain link fence. First I cut out appropriately sized pieces for fence posts from the spruce. I don't want the base to be almost invisible here, but to look like a small earth wall, so I use foam board for it. To give the fence posts optimal hold, I cut out holes and then glued the fence posts into the holes using wood glue. I use wood glue here because my super glue is not foam safe and because hot glue tends to melt the foam and only provides good short term hold. Wood glue is simply the best solution in the long term. I glue suitably sized pieces of potato netting to the fence posts with super glue. Also, a few damaged fence posts shouldn't be missing. I glue the rolled barbed wire onto the fence posts with super glue. I recommend that you somehow carve notches into the fence posts where you can stick the barbed wire in. The way I have done it here, unfortunately, is quite fragile. Finally, I cover the base with filler and sparkle sand on top of it. This gives the base and the fence post a good stability and texture. Then I fix the sand with diluted wood glue and start painting. For the base and fence posts, I use sort of the same colors as for the concrete wall. Brown acrylic paint on the base and a first layer of dark grey acrylic paint on the fence posts. After that I use a sponge to apply rust and metal color to the wire. Brown, black, orange and gunmetal paint. To give the fence post some variety I then dabbed on some grey gesso. Time for some wash. The penultimate step is dry brushing, again with light grey acrylic paint. Lastly, I refine all the rusty areas with some dirty down rust. And here are the finished fences. Most of the fence elements got refined with grass tufts, but also skulls or debris fit well on the base, depending on the setting.
Well, uh, I hope I got the versatility of these fences across well, and I hope there was something here for you to rebuild or to inspire you. If you like what I did, please give the video a thumbs up and maybe write me a comment. Goodbye, till next time.